Welcome back to the 13th part of my laboratory water bath series. We are still working on the software, yeah, chapter 4, and we are still working on the model based controller for the heater. And yeah, we got it basically working last time, uh, yeah, card link. But there were some slight problems, which we will hopefully solve this time. The first problem we have to tackle is that we overshoot our target temperature, yeah, the blue line, when we have to increase the temperature quite a lot. So in this case, from above 20 degrees C, yeah, down below here, to the blue line, which is at 40 degrees C and we overshoot before we stabilize. The second problem we need to tackle is that sometimes under some conditions, we have these short heater on pulses, which do, yeah, red is our actual temperature, do absolutely nothing for us, but uh, somehow delay regulation. So the temperature drops and drops before then a real switch on of the heating element occur occurs, uh, which can actually increase the temperature again. So let's get started with getting rid of these overshoots because they can be massive and possibly destructive. I mean, um, here that is for a dry bath, so no water on it. And I start at uh, 20 degrees C and my target temperature is 50 degrees C. And uh, yeah, you see it yourself. I end up at uh, somewhere 80 degrees C. So I want to increase the temperature yeah, from my status quo to my set by 31.2 degrees C, and I end up increasing it 65 degrees C. Can be deadly. Anyways, uh, the problem here obviously is that, yeah, during our learning phase, and yeah, you have to watch the previous part, card link, uh, to understand what I'm telling here. During our learning phase, we determined our constant. Yeah, how long do I have to switch on the heating element to achieve a certain temperature increase? And you can see here the yellow line. Let me zoom down. Yeah, that's the value we learned relative to the blue line, which is the set temperature. And you see, after, after we had this overshoot, I have to correct this, or the algorithm corrects this quite massively to 2.4 degrees C per second heater on. And before it was, yeah, about halfish, only 1.2 degrees C. And you can see that pattern in other overshoots I recorded. So here we start at 20 degrees. Our target is 40 degrees and we overshoot. Yeah, we want to increase the temperature by 18 degrees and we end up increasing it by 26 degrees. And it's the same here. The value for degrees Celsius per second heater on we learned during our learning phase is too small. And after that overshoot, we have to correct it up to 0.9 degrees Celsius. You see the difference uh, just here on the graph. It's not that big, but also the overshoot was not that big. Last example, and the previous one was actually for a wet water bath with a liter of water in it. Uh, I just labeled it wrong. So again, here, 20 degrees start, 40 degrees set temperature, and this time really dry. And you see this really massive overshoot, yeah? We're overshooting our target temperature by uh, over 100%, yeah? We want 80 degrees Celsius temperature increase and end up with a 39 degrees Celsius temperature increase. 
And again, our yellow line, our model parameter degrees Celsius per second heat on has to be corrected. Yeah, uh, over a factor of twice, I would say to 2.8 degrees C per Celsius after that overshoot. So what's going wrong? There are two distinctive possibilities. The first possibility is that the value we learn for the degree Celsius per second heater on during our learning phase is uh, crap. And yeah, uh, remember our learning was based on yeah, increasing the duration of a heating pulse until we measure a temperature increase of one degree Celsius minimum. That was a parameter. So learning that, yeah, the degree Celsius per second heater on for that small temperature increase is obviously not suitable for the large temperature increase we want to control afterwards. I mean, that's one possibility. The other distinctive possibility is that our very simple model is crap. Okay, so we have this linear model, very linear model, where we just have basically one parameter that is a thermal capacity of the system, which can change, of course, depending if there's water in or how much water is in. And we derive from that this very simple parameter, yeah, our delta temperature over time the heater is on. So degrees Celsius delta over seconds heater on. And maybe things are not that linear. Remember that more complicated model, uh, the details don't matter at the moment, but we use that to, yeah, uh, describe the nonlinear behaviors of the whole system and yeah maybe maybe we need a more complicated model for our model-based controller. So we could come up with a more sophisticated model but a more sophisticated model would probably involve more parameters, which we would have to learn at startup and to optimize during runtime, which would complicate things enormously. Besides, once we reached our target temperature, yeah, the blue line, our temperature regulation works quite well. So let's not go down this road. Let's assume instead for the moment that what we learn about our parameter in the learning phase is crap. Short recap, I already mentioned it in the intro, how our learning phase works. So we start with the shortest possible on time for the heater and we increase that incrementally until we measure, it's not visible here, sorry, until we measure a temperature increase of at least one degree Celsius. That was a parameter. That is, we measure our parameter for very small temperature increases. But of course, after switching on, you have a big temperature increase. And there is an upper limit for our parameters, degrees Celsius per max heater on. There is a maximum. I mean, our heater has only such and such power and we have a minimal thermal mass of our water bath, yeah, when it's completely dry and empty. And the maximum value I measured here is 2.8 degrees Celsius per second. All other overshoots showed a smaller value. So let's assume we say that's uh, three degrees Celsius per second. We get rid of the learning phase and simply let our controller run with that initial value. The code changes we need for that are really minimal. And yeah, it's the next day and I meanwhile shaved my head. Deal with it. So 
we still need our controller increase learning. Yeah, the minimum temperature increase for learning, even if it's called learning, but we also use it in the normal operating phase. We need an additional constant. Yeah, maximum heater Celsius per millisecond on because, yeah, I talked about, yeah, Celsius per second heater on all the time, but in the code I noticed I always work with milliseconds. So instead of three Celsius per second, it's here 0.003 Celsius per millisecond. In the controller class itself, we can get rid of that enum mode because we don't have to make a distinction anymore if we are learning or actually regulating. We are always regulating now. So let's get rid of that one. And of course, we don't need the mode variable associated with it. We do need, yeah, this new max heater Celsius per millisecond variable, yeah, to <laughs> store the parameter somewhere. Further down, just, yeah, below our uh, private variables, we can get rid of the whole learn procedure or private method completely. And the regulate method will basically stay unchanged. In the constructor, we have to take care now of that additional constant or parameter we are passing, max heater Celsius per millisecond. And of course, we store it in our private variable. In our update function, yeah, our core function, uh, we still calculating, of course, the temperature derivative, yeah. Uh, but the controlling section, this basically collapses down. We don't have a switch of mode uh, because we don't have any mode. We don't call learning anymore. And the only thing we call is the regulate private method. And that's it. And continuing here, yeah, start... Uh, yeah, the mode is, of course, we don't have a mode anymore. And stop, we don't have a mode anymore. And these are the modifications for the controller class. Uh, of course, when we initialize our controller object, we have to pass that additional parameter here, controller max heater Celsius per millisecond. And now let's see how that works. Okay, our set temperature should be, uh, sorry, at 40 degrees C, which it is now, and now I'm switching on. And we have immediately a heater on, and the temperature will rise. And we have that short pulse, but we, yeah, that was the correction, uh, yeah, uh, or adjustment of our parameter after that big temperature rise. Okay, um, we can stop here at that point. Uh, let me disconnect the whole thing and switch it off. Uh, we're holding the temperature and this is, uh, uh, everything here is above a 38.5 degrees C. So yeah, we are uh, within 1.5 degrees C of our target temperature. A little bit of, uh, yeah, staying below it, but uh, that's not a problem. That's not a problem. Let's test that with water in the bath. So with water in the bath now, switching on, and we don't expect to reach uh, the temperature to reach, yeah, almost to 40 degrees C because our thermal mass is now bigger and we start with the same, yeah, 
parameter. Where is it? Uh, here it is. And you see, yeah, it, it, the temperature is already yeah flattening out here. So with more thermal mass, we need a second heating cycle. And you see, we corrected the parameter degree Celsius per second heater on based on our first temperature increase. Not to an absolute minimum, but uh, yeah, to hopefully a realistic value. Still not quite there. So it takes a few hops to get up there. We have a little overshoot here that was 0.9 degrees Celsius, but uh, yeah, now we are regulating. Okay, let's stop here. Um, obviously, oh, sorry, I'm disconnecting the mouse instead <laughs> of the lab water bath. Uh, anyway, uh, we see here again, and that was in the intro, the second problem we have to tackle, that we have these short pulse, lung pulse patterns where the first short pulse obviously does nothing for our temperature. Okay, so, but that's next. Uh, the important thing is we got rid of the overshoots. So yeah, if we have really a high thermal load in here, we need a few bumps, yeah, to get up to temperature and then we're regulating. So everything's fine. And we just achieved that by <coughs> basically throwing out a whole lot of code. So yeah, I'm happy. Um, great, next problem. So let's talk about these short on, long on sequences. I've analyzed here an example from the last video. Yeah, there was already a, a card, but a link below. And we have here again, a very short on, then a longer on, short on, then a longer on. And in that example, that repeated for the whole time while the unit was regulating the temperature. And for these two pairs, I've drawn in some additional lines. First, these black lines. And these mark the dead time or the end of the dead time after we switched the heating element on. So 10 seconds until we expect anything to happen with the temperature after we start heating. And then we have these dotted red lines. These are tangents to our red temperature curve at the points where we switch the heater on. A little math at that point. The steepness of our tangents is of course the derivative of our temperature curve at the points where I have drawn in the tangents. And we already calculate the derivative of our temperature curve. However, that is low pass filtered. So there is a little time delay in that derivative relative to the original temperature curve. Keep that in mind. If we just have a look at that first heater on here, the duration of that heater on is calculated by our model parameter, degree Celsius per second heater on, and the difference between our actual temperature and our set temperature. However, after the dead time, that difference has grown bigger because <laughs> our temperature was falling, still falling at that point. And yeah, our temperature derivative was of course, because it's falling, negative. That is in effect, we made our pulse too short because we based it on this difference instead of that difference here. And you have this, exactly the same picture for the second short on. 
and to a lesser extent also for the long short ons. Well, the error here is of course a little bit smaller or significantly smaller because the temperature is not falling as fast at these points. Currently our algorithm, specifically the condition when to switch the heater on works as follows. We have here three subclasses in that condition. The first one being the temperature derivative, the green line, must be zero or smaller than zero. Yeah, we have that here when the temperature red line is falling again. Then the temperature must be below the set temperature minus our minimum learning limit, which is one degree C currently and it must be smaller than the set temperature minus the minimum temperature increase we can achieve by only switching on the heater for one cycle, currently 500 milliseconds. When all three conditions are fulfilled, we take the difference between our actual temperature and the set temperature at that point in time and use that to calculate our heater on time. But we know this difference is too small because after the dead time has passed, the temperature has fallen further. So what if we at that point of time estimate or extrapolate the temperature we will have after the dead time has passed? And yeah, estimating that is quite simple because we approximately know how the temperature will develop because yeah, we have the temperature differential. So the temperature at that point of time calculated from here, our temperature forecast will be the actual temperature plus the temperature derivative times the dead time. That's called a linear extrapolation and of course <laughs> at some points in the curve this will produce quite a large error. For example, if we are just at that point here and we would yeah, put our tangent here and extrapolate the temperature, uh, this will be just uh, BS. But at other points in the temperature curve, that works quite well, especially in the short time range, yeah, our dead time of 10 seconds. And we've seen here, yeah, these tangents here, they match the temperature curve quite well. This really just requires a minimal code change in our regulate private method of our controller class. Of course, we need or I choose to use an additional variable, approximate temperature or to be more exact, the linearly extrapolated temperature after the dead time. And if our condition is fulfilled to switch the heater on, I calculate that approximated temperature in the future and then I use it to calculate our heater on four time or the number of cycles our heater will be on instead of the actual heater temperature which was here previously. That's all. So let's try that with the still wet water bath and uh, cooled down quite a bit. We are just at 17 degrees Celsius here and yeah, target again set temperature 40 degrees, switching on now. And you see we still need a few bumps to reach our target temperature. And uh, yeah, we have here a little overshoot, half a degree or so, nothing to worry about. And we still have shorter and longer pulses, but yeah, it's not that repeating pattern again. And yeah, you see every heating pulse does actually something for us. And those, uh, it's stabilizing now at, uh, yeah, bottom line here is at about 
38 degrees and top line is about yeah 19.5 degrees so yeah regulating quite well uh, we need to try that with a dry water bath too of course Dry water bath from the beginning. Yeah, we are not quite down to 20 degrees C. We're at 24 degrees C. But anyway, let's switch on and see what happens. Heater comes on, of course. And... Yeah. We're regulating just fine and uh, we are even regulating better than <laughs> with water in it, uh, which is not really a good thing, but it's nice to know that everything is safe if I ever forget to put water into it. And yeah, I'm happy. This is even a much better regulation. Uh, this is... Uh, that line 38.9 so we are within 1.1 degrees celsius of the set temperature now it's zooming in a little and uh, of course we can wait until the next uh, heating pulse comes on i'm happy still not perfect but uh we get we have a working regulation and uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for now, huh? There's still room for improvement, of course, but for now it's absolutely usable. You set a temperature for your heating element and the rest will come up to that temperature naturally. Of course, <laughs> there are two more sensors in here, which we can use to control those processes. <laughs> uh, but this will happen at a later point in time. For now, I have to <clears throat> review a 40 gigahertz signal generator. See the unboxing video card link. And before I start to incorporate these other two sensors, I need something to shake things up. Meaning a laboratory shaker that shakes my water bath. Cause, uh, well, water in itself is a very bad conductor for heat. And so to have a real good distribution of temperature inside the water bath, you <clears throat> need to shake it. Uh, shaking stuff is also very good uh, when you're etching PCBs. So yeah, that's a prerequisite before we can continue with our controller here. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, some people uh, wanted to see the code and the current code, which is, of course, a work in progress. Uh, there's a link down there to a Google Drive where you can find it. Okay, I've got everything now. So, till next time. Bye.